few things to remind her of your love. A little card to say I love you, a gentle touch, some flowers, or even just a phone call or a text just to say, you know, I'm thinking of you. She needs your conversation. Spend time each day keeping up on the drama of each other's life. The conversation is an important bridge builder between your two worlds. It allows you to share life when, even when you're apart. Tim, Marika needs you to be open and honest with her. Freely tell her your thoughts and your feelings. She needs to know what's on your mind. This builds trust, and trust builds the security that Marika will need to blossom as your wife. Choose things that you can do together. Dream dreams that you can dream together. It always takes a little more effort, but it's always, uh, you, know, you never regret the time that you invest in the foundation of your marriage. The marriage bond, though, is not only emotional and physical, but it's spiritual. Therefore, Tim, it's really important that you understand, and I know that you do, that you as the husband are to give spiritual leadership to your home. Make time to pray with Monica and share with each other how, what God is doing in your life. <coughs> if you meet her needs, you will always have her love. More important, you will know that you're living a life that pleases God. Tim, this woman of your choosing has become your partner for life, the co-heir of your possessions, and the sustainer of your home. She has chosen to give you her utmost loyalty, to share with you the joys and the sorrows of life. And Marika, this is what the Apostle Paul says to the wife. Wives should always put their husbands first. Just wait as the church puts Christ first. So I know as soon as I say that, everybody is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. At first glance, this scripture tends to make it seem that the wife is not equal to the husband. But really, in the context of the scripture, what Paul is saying here is that the wife should deeply respect her husband. The deep longing of a husband's heart is to be admired and respected by his wife. And I think if you ask any husband in the room, they would tell you the same thing. Tim needs to know that you believe in him. It's good to praise him for his achievements. He needs to know that what he does has acceptance in your eyes. Now, this does not mean that you'll always agree with what he does. But what it does mean is that you will be the president of his stand club, his number one supporter. When you first met Tim, you saw that he had many admirable qualities. And through getting to know him over the years, you've discovered even more of those strengths and qualities. So I'd encourage you to help him build on those strengths. He needs to have you on his side no matter what happens. Tim also needs to have you as a recreational companion. So find the things that you both enjoy. Be willing to try new things so that you can have fun together. I encourage you to develop your relationship by concentrating on interests that you can share. Because I tell you, it's, there's a saying that says those that pray together stay together. Well, it's equally as true about those that play together stay together. Finally, Marika, the most important thing in your life needs to be your relationship with God. Do everything you can to cultivate that relationship and share with Tim what Christ is doing in your life. A relationship with Christ, the designer and the expression of true love, will open new capacities to love fuller and deeper. Furthermore, Tim needs your prayers. Pray that God will lead him and give him wisdom as he leads your family. Pray that God will protect him and keep him. And pray that he will succeed. Marika, this man of your choosing has become your partner for life, the co-heir of your possessions and the provider of your home. He will look to you for support in times of trial and decision making. Your faith will brighten all of his days. And to both of you, the scripture says, submit yourselves to one another in reverence of God. Submission to one another means that you'll always be looking to meet the other needs, the other person's needs. You'll always be looking to find ways to accommodate and enhance your love for one another. There's probably no more beautiful an illustration of God's love for us than the wedding ceremony. Frequently throughout the pages of scripture, God refers to himself as the husband, the lover, the fiancé of his people. He refers to Israel as his beloved, his betrothed, and to the church as his bride. And so today, what Tim and Rita have done in pledging their love for one another before all of us is to illustrate for us God's love, God's fidelity, his passion for, for us. This public declaration of Tim and Rita's love for each other is not just for them today, but in fact, it's for all of us today whether you're single, married, young, or old. 
As Tim and Rita have found in one another their love and completeness, so God invites each of us to find our completion in Him. Now, by way of announcement, we ask that there be no throwing of confetti on church property, and that you would take the time to greet Tim and Marika in the receiving line, which will be immediately following the service. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Dear friends, it gives me great pleasure to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. John Timothy Philip Camps. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.